Hey, Sanctus Church, welcome to The Morning Brew. Today, we are so privileged to be back together with Lori Hartzorn. Hey, thanks, Brandon, inviting me to, you know, sip coffee or chat or whatever That's we right. do here. It's it great. Is, it is a pleasure. <laughs> Lori, it's good to have you back. I want to ask you, we just had this solar eclipse that happened last week. It was kind of something that there was anticipation waiting into this thing, wanting to see this great thing. And then it was really cloudy here. It was. <laughs> Did you it get really, to see it, it at all? It was very disappointing. <laughs> I didn't, actually. It was so cloudy. We had grandkids, and I'm like, it just didn't seem worth dragging them out to, yeah. you know? I was, I was, I bought the glasses ahead of time. Okay. I was like looking up all these different things. How do you, how do you best see this yeah. eclipse? Because I heard the next one won't be for another 120 or so years that it's the full thing. And we went out in the parking lot here at the church to Did like you? see it. Did and you then see there it? Was, we saw just a little sliver. Oh. The clouds opened up just for yeah. a second and then cloudy. But I saw yeah. it got dark. So maybe that's God. something to talk about. Well, you know what? When I, because I, like I said, we had the grandkids with us because they, schools were off so you know that's what you do you jump in to help out and we experienced the effects mm. of the solar eclipse we didn't see it but we felt the effects of it and mm. we took the kids out and went look at how dark it is and my six-year-old was explaining to me how the moon was blocking the sun ah. and then it started to get light again so we actually experienced the effects of what was actually taking place very cool which was really cool there's something about anticipation as we're waiting for this thing to happen yeah and we've just started a brand new series here at the church called in the waiting yeah. and the whole premise of the series is that often when the lord promises something in scripture or to us in our in our own lives today the fulfillment takes time and yeah. there's this whole journey from you know Last week, we looked at Abraham being told to leave his family, leave his culture, to go to this place that he didn't know, to a people he didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord's given him this great promise. There's this anticipation of arriving there, but the journey in between can sometimes take mm -hmm. just so long. Mm -hmm. it, you know, sometimes you can say, God, did I actually hear you, right? Mm -hmm. Was this, did you actually tell me to do this? Because yeah. it's this grandiose thing that the Lord has said to do. But then when the fulfillment happens, just that, the trust that is built from that, but mm -hmm. also just the, the blessing that comes from what the Lord has promised, mm -hmm. because the Lord only promises good things to his people, yeah, right? For sure. I wanted to just have this conversation around this because it's such a big topic. Yeah. You know, how do you, how do you feel when you think about just the term in the waiting? Because mm -hmm. we all experience this. I know you've experienced this within yeah. your own life. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear sure. your thoughts around that. Well, you know, as I was even listening to John and he starts up, I reminding us of the truth of really Abraham's life and many others like it, the key component was faith. Mm. And he needed, and Sarah, Sarah, his wife needed, and then, then we're still gonna learn other stories, you know, Jacob and Isaac. It really hinged on faith. And so what is this faith? And I think that often, Brandon, in my own life, and I think for many that are watching too, you can relate to the fact that you can get so focused on maybe that promise or that destination or that prayer, that thing you're praying for, or that, you know, just that knowing you have that God has spoken to you about something in your life. Mm -hmm. You can get so focused on the destination that you lose sight of the journey. Mm -hmm. And both are important, but I actually think in my own life, I've experienced that uh, the journey is as important, maybe more important than destination. I can give you an example. Uh, the time of waiting in my own life, uh, certainly one of the most significant times was the times we were waiting and praying for our children to return to the Lord. Mm. And they had, all three of them had gone away from the Lord in significant ways and making choices in their life that were destructive. And my husband and I were on this journey of, well, first of all, would we believe God that they were going to return to the yeah. Lord? And that journey of actually faith of, we believe that they will return to the Lord was just actually almost the first step of, okay, now we can actually get on the journey of faith because mm -hmm. we are, we've heard from God, we believe and other people surrounded us to believe together. And we really had this, we're trusting God. We believe this is God's will that our kids follow him. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stake our life on this. And the destination was those kids returning to Jesus. Yeah. But Brendan, it was seven plus years of waiting and ups and downs and a lot of, many times of no hope. Mm -hmm. And I know some of you are watching and you're there even for your kids or loved ones. And here's the thing. God loves to work in the middle, not just in my kids' lives, 
but he changed me mm -hmm. in the journey. I, would, I wouldn't exchange it for anything, mm -hmm. what God did in my life. And, and he, he started to form faith in me, like Abraham, like Sarah, and it was, and I'm always intrigued by Hebrews 11 when you look at faith in the story of mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarah, and I love this verse, it says, even when Abraham reached the land God promised him. So he's at the destination, right? Yeah. Like it's finally happened in his life. He gets to this promised land that God told him about. He lived there, how? By faith. Mm -hmm. Even at the destination, he's living there by faith. Why? For he was like a foreigner living in tents. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to say, and so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. We're gonna learn about as John's gonna teach us. But here's the thing. He arrives at the destination, but he's still living in tents. Yeah. And he recognizes, in some ways, maybe it wasn't all it cracked up to be. Maybe there was more to the destination. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was more to the promise. And it goes on to remind us that Abraham kept his sights on what really was to come, this eternal city with God. Yeah. And in my own experience, Brandon, I've had to learn that in the time where God did miraculously answer our prayer, we give him glory to see our kids come back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It was like but we're still living by faith. Sure. And we still have to trust God in those moments of the journey and in the destination, because actually the destination and the promise in your mind may look different when you arrive, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I just think this whole journey of in between, it's just a constant place in our life. So never dismiss it as not important or I just got to get through or, it's actually the most beautiful place of what God does in your life. Mm -hmm. And it really never ends until the final hope of being with the Lord, right? That's right? So anyway, just I'm really moved by this series and I hope people are encouraged as they journey, mm -hmm. wherever they are in the journey, that you know we just keep growing in faith. We put our confidence and our trust in God in the middle of the mess, as I say, or in the middle of the middle, you know, in the middle of the waiting, because it's all about God loves faith. And mm -hmm. without faith, it's impossible to please God. So yeah. faith is really the key to the journey through and even when we arrive at some of those destinations and promises in our life. I love what you say about when Abraham arrived to the place that, you know, this is where God has told him to go. Yeah. He still has to continue living by faith. Because yeah. when we see, you know, what happens with Isaac, he goes up the mountain. Abraham says, we're going to go up and worship. But he was actually going up to kill Isaac, right. right? Just continuing by faith. The Lord has promised him these things are going to happen. They've been fulfilled. So now he can now trust the Lord when he says, hey, I want you to actually go and do this with the only son that you've been given. Yeah. I don't think Abraham could have done that had he not gone through all the trials throughout in the waiting to okay. learn that God has a character of, you know, of loving, of taking care, of growing faith within Abraham as yes. he believed. I'm also reminded of King David when he was, uh, you know, Saul said, you are going to be the next king. Right. It didn't happen right away. No. He still had to live under the reign of King Saul. Yeah. You know, someone that's actually out to get him, trying to, to yeah. take him out. He's literally but running he's in the middle, running. right? <laughs> running he's in the running. waiting. Yeah. But the character that was grown yeah. within David, as, as God says, he's a man after his own heart. I don't think David could have led God's people in the same way had he not had to have this long time of being out in the fields, trusting God for what he says yeah. to get him to the destination, which was really just the beginning of the next thing. For sure. It, to your point, it is the beginning of the next thing. Mm -hmm. And that is such a good reminder. I, I, I just think, like, wherever we are, we know God is with us. Mm -hmm. we, John reminded us of that. He's present with us every day, every moment, the ups and the downs, the mountains and the valleys, the boring times in between. Actually, God is always at work. He's present in our life and he's always shaping us. Mm. And I have found that in my own life, as I've gone from season to season, in some ways from promise to promise, mm -hmm. uh, it's just been amazing to see how God has changed me through in the journey and mm. that's the beauty of you're always no matter age or stage wherever you are in your life god is able and willing and desiring to keep forming you and changing you and making him more like himself because mm -hmm. that's kind of the point of this whole thing yeah right yeah. to become actually more like god to think like he thinks to act like he acts to experience 
this life, you know, from his eyes and his perspective, and that's what faith is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when I was thinking about a quote that Pastor John mentioned from, from last week, this was Martin Luther he was quoting. He says, I'm terrified by the thought or idea that someone has the ultimate power and they can do whatever they want unless that person is fully holy and loving like God. Mm. And I think when we, when we think of who the person is that is giving us this promise, this character, this relationship that we have with God, it's a lot different than if a stranger comes up and says, hey, Lori, you need to you know, do this thing or this is going to happen to you or whatever. But when we think of who God is, right? We know God is all powerful and all sovereign and God can do whatever he wants. But when we know that God's, God's character of being a loving, righteous yeah. God that, you know, died for us, yeah. right? How much easier is it now to say, yes, God, you are truly holy. You are truly loving. I can put my trust in whatever this thing is that you've asked me to do yeah. because of who you are. Yeah, 100%. I just heard recently one of the greatest or finest characteristics of God, which how do you pick one? But it really is humility mm. as exemplified in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like how the only faith, the only religion has a God that loves us so much that he humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 reminds us. And you know, I, it really struck me recently how entitled I am, how entitled I think we all are. We, mm -hmm. we just get ticked off if we haven't got what we want or we expect or yet God hasn't answered us the way you now or, or maybe we feel like never. And Hebrews sure. 11 does say, for many, they didn't see the fulfillment of, their, of the promise Yes. in their life. Yeah. Like the reality is we can think we're all entitled for God to act a certain way in our life, but actually humility, if we're to take on this attitude of humility like Christ, I think it'll be our finest hour mm. and the finest way to go through things. The more I'm learning about humility in my own life, it's like, it's just surrender to the will of God. And to your point, he's good. Mm -hmm. He's good. And he actually loves to fulfill his promises. Yeah. They may work themselves out and look a little different than maybe we're expecting. But if we can lay down our entitlement and take on that humility, I think it makes the journey of faith that much more beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Lori, as we close, I want to just take a second to acknowledge those that are in the waiting. Yeah. Right. We're all in the waiting in, in something, whether it's, you know, uh, we're waiting for an interview. We're waiting for yeah. um, the Lord has promised the return of our children. We're waiting for the Lord himself to return right. in some capacity. Yeah. We're all living in this waiting. How would you encourage people to to really place their trust in the Lord? Mm. Because even throughout Abraham and Sarah's journey, they had lots of times where they failed. They didn't, they didn't stop right. trusting the Lord, but right. they, they faltered, right? They got off the path a little bit. Yeah. How would you encourage people who are in the waiting to continue just trusting mm. the Lord that what he says will come to fulfillment? You know, it really have to put your faith, not in faith itself, mm. uh, about being this faithful person. And, you know, it's about putting your faith in God who is faithful. And I really think it more and more, it's about enjoying God along the way. Mm -hmm. That in my most turbulent times, Brendan, when I felt very, I felt like I had no faith and no hope in sight, even for my children, for the vision I had for my family or for my own life. It was in those moments that the Lord came so close to me and reminded me of who he is. Mm. And if you just, you've reminded us several times already He's faithful, he's good, he's loving. And actually the point of this life on earth is to get to know him. Mm -hmm. So no matter your circumstances, no matter what you're waiting for, like go to him in the journey. That's right. Yeah. Go with him in the journey. Enjoy him. He is where the joy is, you know? Mm -hmm. He is where the, right in the middle of the mess you can find that freedom and joy. It's That's true. Right. I've experienced it in my own life. It's not about everything being all worked out but there'll be a supernatural peace and presence with God when you just journey with him. That's right. Yeah. You know, scripture says we love because he first loved us. We have faith because we have our faith in a God who is faithful. Yeah. yeah. Laurie, thanks for chatting with about this. This was such a great conversation. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for the remaining weeks of this series as Me we too. look at all these acts of faith in the waiting, trusting the Lord to fulfill the things that he has said to yeah. us. Yeah. Us. Me too. I hope you're really encouraged. I hope our 
church, actually our prayer is that we all grow in faith in this time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining in today for The Morning Brew. We hope this has been encouraging to you. And as always, The Morning Brew is brewed to inspire and serve to equip. And we'll see you next week.